Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about sequencing synth sounds and an easy way to do it. I was experimenting a little bit with different methods to set up different sequences based off one single MIDI pattern and this is a very easy way that I came up with to sequence your synth sounds while making them a little bit more interesting at the same time. So let's dive right in. So here we are in the project. It's a little bit of a different project than what I'm used to. This is a 180 BPM high tech track. And the reason for that is because this type of sequencing works really, really well for a high tech side trance. So let's have a quick listen to the example first. So that's the example that I have for you today. And what we're going to do in this video is we're just going to go through the triggering process of all of these synths, the way that I make them play the notes that they play. What I'll do as well is create some shorts and maybe even a long format video on the actual sound design that was used in all seven synths here. So if you want to see those videos when they come out, make sure that you're subscribed and then within the next week, everything should be uploaded. Anyway, let's go back into the project and let's think about what we actually want to do. You can see that we're just using one MIDI track here. And the MIDI track is actually empty. There's nothing really loaded on there apart from the pitch. So going through each individual track, you'll see that there's some weird stuff going on with some LFOs here. There are some kind of devices here that are randomly kind of moving along. And then there's all of these knobs here, which are also seemingly doing random stuff. So the idea behind this synth sound is that I wanted to set up a system where I could just take one 16 note rhythm, like we have here, just a single MIDI note kind of playing over and over again and use that to kind of randomly trigger different synths. So we'd need to make a system that will turn on and off the synth when it is not required to play. The way that I wanted to do that is I wanted to send it zero velocity notes. So notes that have no velocity. So my initial idea was just to set up a mapping from this first LFO here, which is going to control when our notes are going to be turned on and off. And I wanted to just directly map that to the out high. As you can see, the out high is set to zero, and you can see in the curve that none of the line is showing up in the curve. If I turn this up, you can see where the line starts to appear. But if I turn it down, all incoming velocities will be mapped to zero, basically turning any velocity off. Now, this does mean that it requires that the synth that you're using does not actually output the note when you send it a zero velocity MIDI. Sometimes that's not the case. From experimentation, I found that both Faceplant as well as Serum do work with this technique just set up like this. There's no actual modulation that I need to do within Serum itself. And neither do I have to set up anything within Faceplant either. So all of the triggering stuff is done outside of the synth. And as long as you use Faceplant or Serum, I'm guaranteed that this technique will work. So going back to our mapping, we are essentially, we want to turn it off whenever it goes above a certain value so that we can randomize it. So that means that we need a binary selection. Any value above a threshold is going to turn it on and any value below a threshold is going to turn it off. And the way that I do that is with this select here. So this is the middle select. You can see that this LFO is actually mapped to a select here and this is mapped to the select input which essentially selects the chain that you're pulling from. And we have set these values to zero and one so that we can go from off to on. Now I also wanted control, manual control over when each of the individual synths were playing. So we needed to run this select through another select, which would choose between the output of this select and zero. So if we turn the fader all the way down, like it is in this case, it will never actually output anything. You can see that it's not actually moving up this particular parameter here, the out high. Is the one that is actually being mapped to. So if I put it here, you can see we are selecting the zero value, but if I put it here, where this part is activated, you can actually see that it starts to work. This random is fed into here, which turns that into a one or a zero, and then it goes through the here, gets combined with the fader. The fader is now at maximum, so the track itself is selected, and that means that the output high is actually allowed to go to the full modulation, the highest point, which in terms means that there's notes that are being generated which have a velocity other than zero and therefore are sound plays. Now what that means is that this select parameter here kind of accepts a percentage in the sense that if we set this to less than 50%, it will always stay in that lower half or it always stay 
at 1 and therefore it will never actually trigger the 1 and the node will still always be 0. But this ratio basically gives us a percentage. So we can set that to 62, it will trigger every once in a while if you want it to be half half. We set it from 0 to 100%. If you want to trigger it more often than not, we can turn up this value. And above 50, it is always triggered. So you can almost see these two sliders as a dry wet percentage. Between a dry or a zero, there's no effect here and the sound is never triggered. And 100%, the sound is always triggered. But you have to do it in this kind of wonky way, in the sense that it's everything above 50% is triggering and anything below 50% is not triggering. Therefore, you need to actually set up two parameters, the maximum and the minimum percentage that you're sending. And that just takes the output of the LFO that we see in the window here and kind of scales it between those two percentages, which then decides the select amount, either one or two. So that takes care of the actual node triggering. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of randomly also select the octave because in high-tech sidetrends, one of the effects that I often hear is that there's sometimes a very high kind of frequency spike in the spectrum. And a cool way to kind of emulate that is just to once in a while pitch your synth up by one octave or two octaves. So the way that I'm doing that is with the same technique of tying an LFO to a select here. And then this select determines if it's zero or one. And by setting a minimum and maximum value, we're actually switching between zero and plus 12. Meaning that sometimes we're going an octave higher. And sometimes in very rare cases, if both of them trigger on, we actually go two octaves higher. And again, we use percentages here to actually set the amount of times that we want these to trigger together. So I wanted to quickly say that these select devices and the fader device here, I buy Dark Integer. I wanted to quickly shout him out because obviously I'm using his devices. I did make a video on his pack, his modular pack. And that's a pack with a whole bunch of different kind of things inside there. I have some other devices as well, but majority of the devices that you see in here are actually from that pack. So you have things like ADSRs, combiners, fader. This is one of the ones that we use. You have his LFO. We have some logic stuff, delays routing stuff you have probabilities here as well which could also be useful and a whole bunch of other different things that i'm not really that familiar with to be honest the remapper is something i've never used the, the multi stuff and the ms gate i really don't exactly know what that is and that's because this comes from the modular synthesis world so i'm not really familiar with that world so i don't know everything in this pack but it's a pack that i sometimes use to create these kind of cool automated devices which is really what I find them interesting for is this automatic like pattern generation for synths. So I wanted to show you how you use the routing because it's very very easy to just select synths to play. So for example if I go into the automation you can see that the fader A just determines where this synth plays. So this first synth sound plays here. And you can see now our note highs are turning on. And the same is true for synth 2 up until 5 which I have play in the second section and then this is the synth that plays in the first section this plays on its own i also turned off the delay for this part just to give a little bit more contrast so let's say that you wanted to add a synth to this kind of system that we've created here what you would want to do is you would want to take all of the things that i've created and i'm going to leave a copy of this project file on my patreon i'm going to paste the second part of the system in there and i'm going to take the first part of the system as well and by selecting serum I can paste that right here and now we need to reassign some parameters here so I'm going to take this off and this off map this here map this one here and then these ones are going to go there and there you can see that all of the mappings within here are already set you can see these devices are already kind of shaking maybe not this one here uh, this parameter seems to ah no yeah now it is set because this one was at 100% the reason for that is if you set it to 100 100 it will always trigger the synth so this is basically a 16 rhythm for this synth right here but that means that we can now set the amount of times that we want this synth to play and let's say that we want this synth to play 50% of the time the final thing we need to do is assign it to its trigger so it's just going to take midi in from there and now this is a setup synth and it is part of the group and it will play. Obviously you need to send it some MIDI there, like that. And you can hear that it's playing. Now a cool thing that you can do is do individual changes. So for example, maybe I want this synth to be an octave lower. 
what I can do is listen to it like this. I might also not want it to actually pitch up. I want it to maybe always stay in the same octave. So let's turn these probabilities to zero and you'll see that these stop kind of changing. Again, you can set probabilities here in the same way that you can set it here. I will leave it like that and then just mix it in. I'm going to make this synth 6 a little bit quieter like that. And now we need to select where we want to play this. So for this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bit more of an interesting pattern by going and selecting this. And I just want to play it like this. So it's going to play at the first two beats of every bar. Kind of like a nice pattern that it layers on top of these older synth. What might also be cool is to slightly turn down the amount here. I don't know if that's possible actually. I don't think it is. We can actually make something like this where we draw in our own patterns of turning it off in here as well. And then we can maybe duplicate that over and have it repeat like that. I believe here what I had was a modification like this to make it so that it stops playing there. So now you can see if I open this up that it actually followed this curve in that it randomly plays in here based on our percentage, 50% of the time. And then here you'll see that it completely stops. So this is a very interesting technique of triggering your synths. It really liberates you from writing your own MIDI's. As you can see, the MIDI track here is just plain simple. As I said, it just has a pitch on there. We're not doing any crazy effects on here. All of the crazy effects are happening within its own channel. And this is just something that you can duplicate over for each synth that you want to add. And therefore, it makes your workflow fairly easy if you work with this. So what I'm going to do for my patrons is I'm going to leave these two devices um, that they can download as well as the whole project so that they can look at it. Keep in mind that you need the mod uh, pack from Dark Integer for them to work because obviously you need these devices here otherwise they won't load. And if you have issues with setting up the routing and stuff like that I suggest that you watch this video back. I hope that I explained it well enough. If not you can always ask me questions in the comments down below or message me on Discord if you have any issues regardless if it's connected to this pack or not. So that's going to be the video for today. As I said, again, there is going to be a counter video on the actual synthesis part, the sound design part that we're doing in this project as well. Those are going to be in the form of shorts as well as a long format video. So those kind of go hand in hand. If you want a quick explanation, a very stripped down explanation of what is happening, then I'll give that in the form of a short. And obviously in the long format video, I can dive into it a little bit more. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye. It's impossible to talk.